stream up. Happy Friday to Knicks Nation post game live. CP from Knicks Fan TV. My man Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time Show. The final preseason game is in the books. On tonight's episode, we're going to recap the Knicks 117 and 116 loss to the Pelicans. Take your phone calls here from the fans. If you're a diehard Knicks fan, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. This is the home for you. This is the home where we talk about Knicks news, Knicks rumors, and post-game live analysis featuring live calls. Jay Ellis. Yeah, man. Are you are you ready for the are you ready for the re- regular season? No, I'm not ready, man. I'm not, I'm not ready for this game. My heart can't handle it. Oh, we need we need a couple more preseason games, man. We're not ready, man. We're not ready. We no, need... there's too many people on this team. Yeah, there's too many people on the scene, bro. We got too many players, bro. Too many. Too we got too too many players, man, on this team, man. I just I just wouldn't think that, you know, we I I I want a worse team. Like like I, I mean, in a sense of it's just too much. This, too this much is this is gonna be worse than last year, bro. <laughs> it's just gonna worse. be worse than last year, bro. Everybody should be getting minutes. Bro. <laughs> Everybody uh, needs minutes. <laughs> everybody. All right, all right. I mean, out here shooting threes. Like, oh oh man, that comes in and hits a three. I'm like oh, he still dot. Uh, and then ISO comes, comes in, in and blows the whole thing up. <laughs> yeah, like oh, coach, you was sitting me, me, like. Dude, I just dropped. I just dropped what seventeen to four. Oh man, me, this, like, this is gonna this is gonna be worse than last year, bro. Um, all right, Knicks lose one seventeen to one sixteen. Uh, let's talk about some storylines tonight, man. Where are you going first? Where you want to go first? Oh uh, man, first I, I'm I'm gonna go with Randall first. Okay, not, not Randall RJ. I'm going okay. With RJ Solid, fantastic game from RJ. G, I am dog. Listen, any worry I ever had in the summer yep. about RJ's game, uh, gone. Solid. Completely gone. Uh, he, he just feel like he's going to be the man. Yes. And it's just a matter of time. It was like a one-two punch day with RJ and Randall. Mm-hmm. And, and you just saw that RJ just made the right basketball play. Every single time yep. down the court, Whether he's smart, man. Yeah, he, he's shooting. a smart player, bro. Mhm, mhm. Whether it was a shooting, <laughs> passing, there was this one pass where he drove down the baseline and passed it to the wing player on the move and the pass. And all the scouting reports said he couldn't make passes like that. And then you he's see- been doing it quite a bit, though. This is not the first game. He's been doing it quite a bit. I know, like blow up the scouting reports. They all wrong. <laughs> yeah, they they were all wrong. <laughs> There's a mad stuff in those scouting reports. I, I was reading and listening to in the summer that he is he, he just have to blow it up now. All yeah. Wrong. Listen, man, this kid he's only gonna get better, man. With his IQ, his smarts, and his size that he's using to his advantage already. Mm-hmm. On his rookie size, his rookie physique. This is just rookie physique, and he's having his way out there. Um, very encouraging. Like I said, very encouraging. Nine to twelve tonight. Best shooting night of the preseason. Um, defense has been fairly solid, and just yeah. his, his just overall court awareness, man. That the how about the pass where he, where they uh, where Mitch blocked the shot. Yeah. RJ gets it and threads the needle of Kev for the slam. That was beautiful, man. Really, I was so good. Like the passing is on point. Like I knew the passing was on point from dude, but yeah. It- it's impressive that he's able to bring that to the, to the NBA. And and just the finishing around the basket, that was one thing yep. that every scout said he could not do and he had to get better at. And it just seemed like since summer league, he was like, nope, I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, I'm telling you, he's he's picking up right where he left off from, from the summer league straight through. Uh, the last two some games of the summer league straight through to the preseason. Yeah, like You could argue he's, he's, had, he's played the best overall consistently. Yeah. Um, of all, remember, remember when we had Alan Hahn on, and Alan Hahn was like, "Ah, oh, well, you know, we got to take our time with him, bring him off the bench." Now nah, this guy's starting, man. Oh, he, he's start. he's starting from day one. This is gonna be one of our guys for sure. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's starting. He's starting. Um, he's definitely gonna start, and he's gonna probably be a reason, a big reason why this franchise's credibility will eventually turn around. He's in, he's he's an important piece, no doubt about it, man. Um another storyline, the return of Isozo. 
We yeah. we know that he he was a bit you know peeved. He was a bit disgruntled about the lack of playing time in the preseason. Um, part of the ISO storyline is the Ellington storyline. To be fair, I thought Ellington had his best game of the preseason from the perimeter. Uh, he was three for six from downtown, and this is what you can see why Fizz likes Ellington out there as a catch and shoot three guy. You know we need the three point shooting in the worst way, man. We 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 are a lousy shooting team tonight we were pretty good I, I thought we, we were pretty decent from beyond the stripe but you know overall you, you can see why phase wants to give ellington this opportunity because tonight i, I thought he was pretty good iso yeah. iso comes in and does iso he, 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 get, he gets his points and, and almost wins the game for us yeah man and i kind of you kind of get the feeling that iso might be frustrated for not getting minutes but it's yeah. a lot of shooting guards on this team and maybe fizz just wants to get a good look at wayne because we have he has new toy and he has to figure out how it works right you know what i mean I'm, I'm hope that might be the big reason why things like this is happening and iso just might have to wait his turn and take the job you know what i mean like yeah he took it today so you, you figured like when the season starts iso has to get his minutes and even if wayne does play Maybe you flip it. Maybe the ISO's playing more minutes than Wayne because yeah. ISO is versatile. Right? I, I think it's it's gonna be on a platoon, and I think you're gonna see ISO in, in more of those games where we have to finish. I think the the only issue is is just it's too much sticking. And even though they brought us back in the game between ISO and Randall, it was just too much ISO. You know what I mean? Too much sticking, and and against the better teams, it's, that's it's not gonna work that way. You know what I mean? We, we lost the ball movement um, that we got going in the third quarter and late in the second quarter. And I thought the fourth quarter, it was, just, it was too much sticking. Yeah, I thought overall there was too much. I mean, the theme of the preseason, really, is, is the exception of the first game, I felt like we were kind of passing a little bit more. But it was too much sticky overall. We kind of really uh, lean on Randall posting up a lot. Yeah. And he plays out of the post. And when it works, it's pretty. And when it doesn't, it just looks like he. It just looks really bad because we, there's no player movement or anything. Right. And we just hope that as the the season wanes on, that more players are put in place, and it's not just dribble handoff and post Randall, and watch him make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. A, I didn't. I didn't really like. You know what? You know what it was. I, what I did like about this game is that number one, um, the defense did tighten up in the second half. Right, first half they were killing us. This dude Alexander Walker, he's gonna be a player, man. They were lighting us up. JJ yeah. was lighting us up. We we had uh, Jaleel Okafor looking like you know Carl Malone out there. He was killing us. <laughs> um, the defense just wasn't tight. But I think I think part of what got us back into it was Mitch's defense. Um, DSJ tightened up on the perimeter a little bit, and 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 also obviously ISO's um, offense got us back into the game. But this was a game that was gonna test us as far as you know how we ex- execute in late game situations. You know, trying to win the game. Who's gonna be the guy? Who's gonna be the go to scorer um, tonight? You know, Randall wanted to be that guy. Yeah, like he was he was good down the stretch for the most part, hitting those threes that he practiced in the summer. Yeah, but uh, again. I'm hoping the coaching kind of evolves as the season goes on. We didn't really have go-to plays to go to to finish off the game. It was right. kind of more of a game, and it was kind of predictable. It was, it was ISO. <laughs> it was yeah. ISO, man. Yeah. You know? I mean, listen, it, it was you, you got to take the good with the bad, and, and the good was that ISO was getting his points. The bad was that a lot of it was in isolation, and the ball was sticking. You didn't hear from, from RJ again until – the last minute or so when he got one more bucket, mm-hmm. you, you know, so that, you know, that was, uh, that was a kind of take the good with the bad in, in terms of, in terms of that. I th- that be- yeah, oh. go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. With that being said, if you were going to ISO at the end, I'd rather ISO ISO than Randall ISO. Yeah, that was the issue, too. Even off that inbounds play, like, give it back to ISO, man. I'd yeah. rather that than Julius trying to pull up for three. I understand he was he was hot. He shot 50% from three tonight. And, you know, he has some good looks. But get the guards involved. It was, it was a little too much um, Julius trying to play hero ball down the stretch. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things, too, with Julius is, is that he, he, you notice he gets stripped a, a, a ton. You know, yeah. when he tries to go one on three, like, okay, the steal at the end was was great. You know, it was a great hustle play. But then he tries to take it in himself like he's a guard, go one on three, and, and he get and he turns the ball over. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where he had 
kind of had the mismatch because he had a small guy on him. So I don't completely blame him. And he, he kind of has a pretty good handle for power forward and kind of good quickness, but he has to work on his handle a little bit and his awareness because he gets stripped. Like you said, he gets stripped a lot down. He there. gets stripped a lot. And if you're, if you're getting doubled and triple teamed, you have to be aware and you have to be able to make the quick read and kick it out to some guards. And that's how you're going to be useful for us. Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, absolutely, man. So on the ISO front, definitely a lot to uh, consider between ISO Ellington. Dot, we saw Dot come in the game. Not really effective. Obviously, he needs time coming off that shoulder surgery. So the backup two guard spot, once again, Jay Ellis is, a, is another area. They talk about the power forwards. Yo, uh, we, we're not talking about the power forwards in terms of playing time. It's the guards is, is where all the depth is. CP, I'm sorry. You, these people on ESPN, NBA TV, commenting on the Knicks and the power forward, big man glut, they don't know our team, dog. They don't. They just read. They just read the paper and regurgitate everything. We know our team. Yeah. We know that we only have one big man, and the real gut was going to be in that guard position. The guard so, position like, is where the issue is, man. Yeah, that's what, it is. That's what the real issue is, man. <laughs> the real Knicks fans know that. that Absolutely. The the, and the reason I say that is because the one thing we know is that you don't want to see these big guys playing together. Like, you don't want to see Mook at the three, Randall at the four, Portis or Gibson at the five. That I don't want to see. Um, but, you know, it, it could you could... Based on how these guys are playing, you don't have to play one of these guys. Like, you don't need Portis, per, per se, if Taj is back. You know what I mean? With the guards, though, like, when do you put Frank in for his defense? When do you throw Iso in for, for his scoring, when the scoring gets bogged down? You know what I mean? When do you yeah. throw Ellington in there because you, you, you need a quick three? If yeah. that, that's going to be the conundrum <laughs> all year long, man. All year long. Toughest job in the NBA. I, I, yeah. I, I said it with my podcast. I said it on, on the show with you and Terry. Man, no one's going to be happy. No one's going to be no, happy. No one's, yeah, the it's going to be tough, man. <laughs> the players ain't going to be happy. Absolutely. Everyone's going to be mad. Everyone's going to be mad. Everyone's going to be mad. Um. <laughs> The, uh, and then, the you know, the other storyline was the point guards. Once again, uh, no Frank tonight. We went DSJ and we went Peyton. DSJ got the bulk of the first half. He finishes with 9-9, nine and nine, 2 of 12 shooting. Ugh, 2 of 12 shooting, JLs. Six <laughs> six times. You know, All right. ne- neither one, it, it was kind of like hot and cold. You know, they had their good moments. They had their pretty lousy moments. I thought with DSJ, once again, still trying to get back into the swing of things. Uh, no confidence in his jump shot. You know, while he made an excellent point, there was one where he had the corner three wide open to himself. And yeah. then it ends up turning the ball over. Yeah, man. And he missed. He clanked a bunch of those before. I mean, they was looking good in an Instagram video. Yeah. But when it came to game time, he didn't hit them. And you know what? This is his real, first real game back. I will say he moved a lot better today because the first game back, he looked injured. Uh, he looked. Yeah, like, yeah. He didn't look too good. He, he didn't look too good. Today he was attacking. Um, he missed a lot of bunnies in, in, in the in the two feet away from the basket and you hope he at least hits those when the game starts going and then you hope that you know the confidence will come for the jump shot yeah and that's really gonna take us to the next level man is one of these guards hitting a jumper man he need, he need some confidence in the jumper and then also i thought um in the first half in particular you know the ball movement just wasn't wasn't really solid you know we, yeah. we needed the guards to, to get us going and and it wasn't too solid peyton you know same thing same thing. Defense was okay. Um, he, 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 he got some guys going. Peyton finished with um, six points, four dimes, three, six shooting. You know, I, like I said, bro, we didn't we didn't need him. We didn't need him. And he, he adds to the glut, but it is what it is. You got him here. We They'll have to figure it out. I don't I don't know how Fizz is going to roll with this, but to me, he, he we didn't need him. We, we didn't yeah, need him. It's one of those things where he set his guys up okay. He played defense okay in spots, and then he did stuff like fighting over the picks, but yeah. then let people shoot the three over him. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Fighting over the pick was useless. <laughs> you know what facts, I mean? so, facts. Like he he was like really hot and cold on defense all the yeah. time. Like, oh, good play! Wait, he let that happen? Right. Good right. play! Oh, he let that and, happen? Man, I seen I seen him airball a, a step back eight footer. Man, that, that was yeah, terrible, man. man. <laughs> that was terrible, but, man. Yo, no one is really. Like for real, like 
in my mind, it's like you go DSJ because it just brings you something completely different. Right. Than Peyton and Frank. And then you have Peyton and Frank, who I said before is kind of similar. Um, maybe Frank can learn a few things about Peyton and his pace and how he pushes the ball. But other than that, you know, Frank's defense kind of sets him apart from Peyton. So uh, it's, we'll see how this rolls. <laughs> I, I think Frank's defense definitely sets him apart from the rest. And that's why I think you you have to play him. You have yeah. to play him. Even though the jumper is not there, even though the inconsistency in offense, he's highly inconsistent, I still think it, it's worth the development. It's worth the development to keep him out there, for, especially on the defensive end. You know, one yeah. of the things Breen, Breen and Wally, you know, and near the end of the game, Breen was like, you know, the perimeter defense is so important. Wally, and then Wally goes, well, it's re- it really starts with the pick and roll defense. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sitting there up. like, this is Frank. You this need stops up. at some point, man. You need yeah. stops. So, hey. It would be interesting to see, to see how he did. I, I, would li- I would love to see what Frank would do with these three-point shooters, man, because, I mean, to, to be honest, I know we got torched from three, but at the same time, they scored 117. They've been averaging 128 a game. Yeah. This whole season. That's what they were saying in the pregame anyway. So, it's even though they got 117 this game, it's – actually not bad considering what they've been doing to everybody else yeah i mean i, I thought i thought the second half things tightened up a little bit S- yeah. second half things tightened up first half it was terrible we every yeah. everybody was getting theirs in the first half it, you know first half was terrible second half things you know got a little bit more respectable and then you know like i said with iso's offense and, and randall stepping up uh, we we got back into the game you know mm-hmm. got got back into the game so once again, Knicks lose 117 and 116. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up for your boys. CP from Knicks Fan TV here. My man JL's from the Nick of Time Show. Are you guys ready for the season or what, man? Call us up, 657-383-1509. Let's hear from the fans. Let's hear what you guys have to say. Make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, before we get to the phones, let me shout out the Super Chats. Robert Paris sends us a Super Chat. He says, RJ's a beast and savvy. Solid on defense, too. Totally yeah. agree with him. Um, A.O. Powell, shout out A.O. Powell out in L.A. He says, shout out to J. Ellis. He said, I remember a few Nick of Time shows where you were adamant that Darius Garland was the future Nick. Welcome to the RJ Club. Pull up to the yeah, West I, Coast next. I still like Garland, though. I still like Garland. Uh, yo, RJ is, is doing what he's doing, man. Uh, shout out Demo B. He says, yo, I'm starting to feel Mark Jackson would have been better for the Knicks. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I can't, I can't call it with Mark Jackson. But, you know, nah. listen, a lot of people still still clamoring for him, JLs. But, now nah, Mark Jackson days are done. All right, man. First caller up, Ron from Baltimore. What's going on, Ron? How you feeling, yeah. bro? 